Today I'm talking to Shane Parker. I've known Shane since the age of eight. He used to come to my football sessions that I used to coach in the local village. He's gone on to become a personal trainer and on his Instagram and Facebook pages you can see the results of the clients that he's working with at the moment. He's really sort of doing some massive work and getting them to the, the levels of fitness that they want to be at. But his life hasn't always been a simple life. He wasn't very well as a child and that, that sort of carried with him into his footballing career um, a pain and, and a difficulty. He was slightly overweight as he'll talk about during his sessions and this used to make him establish himself in a slightly different way. He talks openly about bullying, which is something that I never knew uh, was something that really played on his mind all the way through his early years. I love the guy to bits. He's been an absolute legend for me. He's helped me to get fit and back onto the treadmill when I needed to get on. So today's podcast, I'd like you to welcome Shane Parker. Welcome, Shane. Thanks for joining me today. No problem at all. Um, we've known each other for quite a while. I think we're probably probably about since you were eight. I think it was the soccer schools back in the young days when yeah. we first started that, back at Heach. So, so yeah, so I've known you for a good period of time, um, seen you sort of grow up and, and become the personal trainer that you are today. So yes. um, so for those who are tuning into the podcast, Shane, our personal, well, hasn't done personal training for me, has, has <laughs> basically looked after me and put me through my paces at the gym having me put you through your paces during the football Agreed. days, Agreed, uh, definitely. During, during the young time. So, so Shane, just tell us a little bit about yourself. No problem. Give me a little bit of history and, and, and what life's been sort of about for you. So for myself, obviously when me and you first met, I was actually moved local to Huge, mm -hmm. uh, around Belper, Huge Way, and I obviously came to your football boot camps when you was a coach back uh, a few years back. Um, loved it to this day, absolutely loved it. Football's always quite a big passion of mine, um, big football fan, loved mm. it to be fair. For me it was moving to a new area when I first came here. I was from the whole Codner way side of things, so it was quite a big change at the time. Moved around a few times with my parents, it was a bit of a daunting experience when I was a bit younger, I'm not scared to admit that now when I look back in time. But I really settled in Huge and I met the likes of yourself, the local uh, childhood around here, I spent a good it was around seven to eight years around here and I absolutely loved it and mm. it cherished this place today every time I come around here. Cool. So going through school, mm -hmm. early days at school, um, what were the challenges that you sort of had and you faced when you were at uh, sort of primary, in your primary education? One thing that I will admit and it's not very often very well spoken about for me is uh, bullying. All right. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought it was funny mm. with friends and family. Um, sorry, family, uh, with friends. And to be honest, I realised it was bullying now, but I thought it was just friends. Um, didn't really like it then. Just kind of went along with it, because I thought it was the norm. When actually I got a bit older, I realised it wasn't the norm and it wasn't right. And I've always said to myself, if I ever landed in that kind of situation again, mm -hmm. I'd know how to handle it again moving forward. So in terms of, as in being a bit of a bully or being bullied? It was actually being bullied, right? Okay. Um, which I never thought I would be in that situation. Wow. Yeah. So um, again, it's something I've not spoken to you about. No, it's sure. Something I've not spoken to anyone about, really. For me, it was it got to the point where I'd go home and no, I think I've had done something wrong. Why is that person being wrong with me? Mm. And I, at the time, like I said, I thought it was the norm. And then week after, they'd be absolutely fine with me. Mm. And then throughout school, I noticed it got better the older mm. I got. But when I first started, at certain schools, mm -hmm. it was always quite difficult to fit in. That's absolutely something that we've never I've covered and, and never discussed before. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think it was that made people think, oh, Again, this, this guy's an easy... Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm short. Easy target, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, like, I like to laugh about it now. It didn't bother me when I was younger, but I think it played a huge part. Mm. Um, my height played a big part. Even though I was quite a fit, athletic guy that I like to consider myself, even though mm. I am the fitness coach now um, and I help people, and it's actually played quite a big part in the career that I'm driven into mm. now and the drive and passion that I show, was I was quite a tubby child. Mm. I don't like to think of it like that. I was quite the striker of the football team, captain of the football team. I had a big influence on the football field um, that mm. I'm very proud of, and I won many things when I played football. 
But I know for a fact that I was quite a talking kid when I look back at photos, and I think high talkiness played a huge part in that. Mm. So what what did you do? How was that coming home? What what did you do? What were your strategies to sort of deal with um, having that happen? And how how did it affect you mentally? The thing is, is because I was so young, I thought it was the norm. Mm. I thought it was just friends being friends, being funny with each other. So I'd go home and wouldn't think anything about it. And then there'd be days where I'd go home, as you would do to your parents, cry saying, that person's being mm. funny with me, that person's being funny with me. They would, parents would interact and say this and this. And then you forget about it a week after. But I'll never forget at the time mm. how it made me feel. It just made me feel low for a day mm. and then high for a day because the day after we'd be fine or the week after we'd be fine. Mm. It was only later on in life that I understood that it's got a classification of bullying. Wow. So being low for a day, I mean, is that something that you've carried? Do you, do you know you have periods of time where you to rather this day, hit some lows? To, yeah? this day, I mean, to be honest, I think it's day-to-day life. I think it's normal. Right. I know that sounds really silly. Not every person is going to go through life on a high. Mm. There will be days where you feel fantastic and days where you feel low. It's how you actually handle the situation. Mm. And for me, on a day-to-day basis, if I have a low day, I'll go for a walk. Mm. I will literally put my headphones in, put my music on a podcast. Luckily, we're doing one today. And just go for a walk. It might be listening to some famous fitness gurus that I'm, I'm very keen on, or it might be my favourite um, rap artist that I'm a big fan of. But it was my way of getting out of that situation. And then, you know, an hour later, my endorphins would change, my dopamine would change, and I'd be in a completely different mindset again. And that, so that's that's how you sort of deal with that now. Deal with it to this day. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so, I think, oh, sorry, I do no, 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 no. I think a lot of people obviously handle it through tablet form mm. when they go to the doctors and they get diagnosed with anxiety, stresses. And like I was just saying, it is the day-to-day life. There is stress factors in play. Mm. There is um, many different outcomes that can happen, mm. but it's how you deal with it. Um, there's some really famous people out there that openly admit what they struggle with, but mm. they handle it in a different situations as well. Like we said, football was a massive part your early early life correct yeah. um, I think it kept my head above water in yeah. school if I didn't do so well at football I think the situation could have been a lot worse so how were you academically at school not the greatest mm. not the greatest at all I came out with the very basic levels of the C's the D's but I knew luckily from that bracket of 14 to 16 exactly what I wanted to do mm. because I think when I lived a younger life, I was a tubby kid. Mm. I was a bit overweight. I was. I always enjoyed my sport. I always wanted to move into fitness. Um, obviously, we spoke about football coaching mm. in the past. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do. But I've got the drive from wanting to help individuals that have been in my position mm. from younger age to older age. Whether that's male, female, whether that's skinny, overweight, it didn't matter to me. Mm. Okay, I just wanted to have that small impact on their life, saying they was in a better situation than I was when I was younger. Mm. So, how how were the teachers when you were at your primary sort Fantastic. of school? Yeah, and did I mean obviously if you felt bullied, did you were you able to talk to anybody about it at the time other than parents? Well, like I say, I actually thought it was normal. Right, I didn't think of it as bullying because I was ten. Right. 12, someone took football off you and kicked it away. You find it funny. But to me, it was every now and then, mm. name calling, mm. swearing, or short, small. Mm. I thought it was the funny game element when actually the older I got, well, that wasn't right. Mm. And yes, it plays a part in my mind now, but that's what drives me to be better than what I was when I was younger. Can, and can you remember when? something clicked in your mind that said hang on a second right this this is not right can you remember that day or can you remember that time not particularly now because obviously mm. I, I tried not to remember it right. I know that sounds really silly no, the less, you, you, the less yeah, I you think move about on. it now the yeah. better of course I'm 24 now I'm not 14 I'm not mm. 8 I'm not 10 um, I tried to forget about situations but it got to the point where I'd go home at night and I question what I've done wrong. Mm. And you know, from a 10 to 14 year old, that is like the making of you in mm. a way, if that makes sense when you're that age. 
I just wondered what I'd done wrong mm -hmm. and I didn't think I had. And then, like I say, the week after you could go in, it'd be fine. Or there'd be friends that you'd never speak to again. Mm -hmm. But I would always question what I did wrong back then. Mm -hmm. and like I say, that's, that's absolutely knocked me back a little bit because, you know, that's something that having known you for so long, we've, like I say, we've never really spoken about. So, so that, yeah, that's... I think that's, coming on to this podcast and obviously to the general population is you get a piece of me that I don't speak about very often. Sure. And is it a way of me probably saying it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there'll be people who probably listen to this and might not know me as well. Taking that opportunity now to, to put that out there. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to give somebody some advice at, at 10, 14, what, what would you sort of be saying to somebody now? Change your mindset. Thought? Start with a strong mindset and realise that there is people out there that mm -hmm. aren't always going to be nice to you. I still do to this day. I think even in adult life, there is people that aren't as nice to you. Mm -hmm. Or it might be down to jealousy. It might be down to you've got something they haven't. Mm -hmm. It might be they think they're better than you. There's many different factors in that. Mm -hmm. But it's the mindset behind it. So if you know you're in a situation and you don't feel 110%, speak to someone. Mm -hmm. I asked, luckily, I spoke to my parents. Okay. So... If my parents listen to this, they'll obviously know. Sure. Uh, I've obviously spoke to them about it, and obviously speaking now, I spoke to them, and I kind of understood from a young age, people aren't always going to be right with you, mm. and it's that's okay. Mm. That that is all right, but it's how you handle it. And for my way of handling it was to kind of laugh it off. Mm. And to this day, I was classified as a bit of a joker in school, always laughing, joking, a bit mm. of a naughty child. <laughs> I went to, I went back down on that either, but I just thought it was funny. I thought if I laughed and joked and acted silly with some people, then I'd fit in a little bit better. Sure. So it was kind of the norm. But my way of moving forward, if I was to tell my 14-year-old, 12-year-old self now, I'd tell them, look, it is going to be okay. You're just having a bit of a patch mm. and it's not going to keep for the rest of your life. So mental health with, within the fitness industry is a, is a big thing. Massively. Plays so, a huge part. And... When you, like you were saying earlier, that you, you know, anybody who comes to you, regardless of their shape, size, gender, yeah, what do you, where do you start them from? What do, what do you sort of look at in terms of triggers and how do you identify definitely. certain things where you go, oh, you know, I, need, I think I need to handle this and I need to handle this. What, what sort of things do you set yourself up to do? So for me, is obviously a lot of people come to me regarding it. I work with a general population, so I deal with fat loss, weight loss, strength, conditioning self-confidence on the gym floor that's a really big factor some people won't even make it onto the gym floor mm. because they don't have that set confidence straight away so they invest in a coach i always tell people there is a difference between a personal trainer and a coach a personal trainer is there to train you in person on a day-to-day -day basis mm. we're going on that um, education course at the moment i'm learning a lot more as mm. i go along um, but for me is there is a difference between a personal trainer and a coach a coach will invest further they will go through the fundamentals of positivity, discipline, motivation. They will run through your sleep pattern, your stress management, how to handle situations. Um, I will touch on nutrition advice, food factors, macronutrients, micronutrients, calorie deficit amounts based on what that client wants to achieve. Mm -hmm. I will run through programming also of what is adequate for that client in particular. Mm -hmm. So if they come to me with weight loss, a lot of people think we're just going to put them on a treadmill or a rower or a cross trainer and say half an hour. There's a lot more value behind that now. And I don't think personal training or coaching gets the value it actually deserves because it's not just a physical improvement that people are wanting, it's a mental wellbeing as well. Mm. We've spoken about you know, you're sort of now furthering your sort of self and your education and moving mm -hmm. forward. So so what what's the what's the stuff you're doing at the moment? Talk to me about that. So I'm currently on what's known as a coaching practice mm -hmm. education course. Um, through a gym in Rotherham known as Ultraflex. The place is fantastic. The vibe, the people, the guy that uh, I won't name um, is really good with me. Mm. He's my personal mentor and he's actually not just taking me through an education course, I'm actually doing a lot of things with my physique as well because mm. I would like to create better content online and kind of outline the meaning of what I'm about. Mm. Okay, so for me, it's I want to not just improve physically, it's a mental challenge as well. Mm -hmm. I want to create foundations and have plans in play so I can work with general day population population and make sure I give them the correct plan based on what they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So hence the reason I've invested in this course. And I did this course not just to 
tick it off and mm. say it looked fantastic to say that every part of education that I learn, I apply to my clients. I apply to the likes of yourself on the gym floor. I apply to my management team, even fellow personal trainers and coaches that I work with because I want to be the best version of me first. And then if I'm the best version of me, I can provide the best version of me to other people. So what is you? Oh, who is Shane? That's a good question, isn't it? Um, I hope so. <laughs> I, always, I, always, I always like to have a laugh and joke with myself because I'm not actually a serious guy. I'm serious in my career, mm. if that makes sense. So off screen. Off serious camera. about what it is you're want to do, wanting to do. Yeah. yeah. So for example, in person, I'm very lighthearted. I will have a pint and a joke with someone day to day, would not hesitate. But when it comes down to clientele, when it comes down to day to day people in my career, I want to live a really good life mm. and I need to invest in myself so I can live that good life. If I'm not investing in myself, I'm just going to remain the same than where I currently am now. And even though I'm very happy as a person, I know I've got more in the tank. Mm. I know I can do more. And if I want to do more, I've got to apply it. So I've always had a bit of a saying in my head is you've got to educate, you've got to apply, and you've got to obtain. Mm. I stick to those ones. I think like I'll go very well far sure. in life. Is that, is that key for you? You want, to, you want to go far? What is the sort of strategy of where you want to go? So for me is... I want to move into the online personal training side of it. Mm -hmm. it, it at some point, moving in probably to next year. Mm -hmm. um, I actually work for a private studio as well, which I absolutely love. I only teach the boot camp sessions, but I've got quite a good following mm -hmm. from that side through the centres that I work for that under the contract. Um, centres through the studios. I absolutely love the teams that I work with. Mm -hmm. I just know I want to do more. And at a tender age that I am now, um, I feel like I'm at that age where I've discovered where I want to be mm. and what I want to be. It's just putting everything into place to get there. Mm. So again, just touching on that and just reverting back to it a little bit. You know, for the first, I've actually been qualified as a personal trainer on paper for around six years. The first three, three and a half, I did not take seriously at all. Mm. I didn't. I know that now. I know that now. So I didn't take it seriously at all. I like the title. Mm. if that makes sense I enjoyed the title I didn't probably enjoy it myself so I've gone through quite a big transformation in the last 18 months to 2 years mm. I've lost weight I've got dropped body fat I've improved my confidence from where it currently was but I know there's a long way to go before I get to the better version of me what was it that, so you, you made that decision you wanted to become a personal trainer said that sort of around your 14s, 15s, you knew that's where you sort of wanted Definitely, to go. Yeah. You got qualified, you got the title. Yeah. And then you took it really not yeah, for the first two, three years. First two, three years. I thought it was Why? Normal. Again, I thought it was normal. I thought I got the title, I've qualified, perfect. I'm in that position, I'm in that career. You it thought you a, had everything? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I quickly, but I'll say quickly, two, three years, I generally thought I did. I was getting the clients in. Mm people was getting results mm. and then I realised I wasn't offering what I should be offering I mean classes were full uh, personal training side were full but I knew I could create a, be a better package mm. I knew I could get people better results mm. so therefore for the last I mean we've got to take into consideration a year and a half of the last two and a half years that we're speaking about now sure. has actually been in lockdown and I think that was a bit of a wake up call mm. to kind of look at myself in the mirror like you've got the free time now mm. take advantage that's exactly what I did. A bit like the question I asked earlier, what was, the, what was the clicking moment that made you go, Shane, you're wasting yourself here, let's, let's ramp it up, let's really make that decision. Something defined you to make that sort of clicking motion. Yeah. For, for me, it's quite hard to answer that because mm. I couldn't tell you now. It would have been at some point in my head where you're better than this. Mm. I think it's, again, I am quite, <laughs> I laugh and joke about it, but I am quite driven. Mm. I always was mm. from a, a very young age, whether it was football, whether it was any type of sports. Mm. I wanted to be the best. And it wasn't trying to beat anyone. I don't think that was even the case. I wanted to be the best mm. at anything. And I would go run, run through hoops mm. to get to where I wanted to be. I think, the, again, touch on probably the clicking point was when I realised that 
everyone else was doing the same as I was doing and I was no different to anyone else, mm. if that makes sense. Sure. So I was like, I'm just in the same circle as everyone that I work with. Mm. And that's no one touching on that. It was just back then. And I thought, I want to be better. Mm. So I've got to start applying more. And then if I build up a better portfolio, it will build me up to that next stage. Mm. And I'm slowly getting to that point now. So we both know football. We both love yeah. football. We've, we've joked and talked about it for many years. I won't say who you support. No, I won't <laughs> say who I support. But football, what, what, talk about a little bit about your football life. Because I, mean, I know there's been things that have yeah. happened to you. and Yeah, you know. um, touching on a few places now. Um, I actually had a really good footballing career. Um, from a young age, I got actually scouted from a local mm. club. Um, and I went there and I actually really enjoyed it. I think one thing that let me down was I had... Again, I won't touch on it as much. I've got a medical background, mm. and that was the letdown for me. They kind of took one look at my medical background and said no. Because mm. <laughs> it was something that back then held me back. Mm. But since I've obviously grown up and everything, I've got fitter, I've got healthier. Um, but I still carried on playing my Saturday and Sunday leagues. Mm. Um, I was actually at the academy for around nine months um, before they kind of made that decision. Mm. But it wasn't meant to be how did that feel when they made the decision to it was my decision it was your decision yeah from a young age I kind of made that decision that they wasn't going to offer me the contract right um, bit of a harsh one to take yeah because um, I've been there quite a while I got used to the lads there mm. I think they just undenied about the and they, they were very honest with me when mm. they spoke to my dad about the situation they were very honest with me and said his medical background is a problem from a young lad mm. perspective they said we can't ensure this and that and if something was to go wrong but again very honest with it and uh, I think my dad sat me down and was like what do you want I said well I'm not willing to I don't really want to continue because mm. I didn't see they were just stringing it along mm. I thought I don't want to be let down six months later I thought sure. I want to be the one in the driver's seat in a way mm. even at a young age that I was yeah. to say no I don't want this so I stopped uh, attending but I always carried on with my footballing career after mm. um Striker, very good striker, I like to consider. <laughs> um, knew where the net was, played for the local teams, again, won't name them, um, the local teams, and had a really good career. I won league titles, I won FA, FA Cups, I won the FA um, Charity Cups, I've won league finals, mm. uh, I've played in some of the best stadiums within the country, which I'm very proud of to mm. this day, I won't name, but I think everyone knows from my favourite football club. And, yeah, uh, well. someone's got to, haven't they? And I've actually played there in person, sure. which I'm very proud of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like to consider I've done really well. Yeah. So you you have got some really really high moments. Oh yeah, some great moments. And you have probably got some low moments. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And so from that strategic point of view, again, how do you cope from those ups and downs? And you know, what what are the things that you've taken forward now? And said, I mean, we talked about your music and walking and yeah. getting the podcast on. So probably back then, how to deal with it was, yeah, again, I, I kind of just moved on, mm. if that makes sense. I didn't overthink it at the time because I thought it was then hot. Mm. I thought, okay, that didn't work out. I'm a young lad, I'll just carry on elsewhere. Mm. So I moved around to a football club if another team didn't want me. Or, for example, I, I fell out with someone, mm. I'd move on. Mm. I never really hesitated. There was always somewhere else to go. Mm. But because I was so young then, I didn't understand the situation. Mm. I know that sounds a bit odd to say now no. through a podcast, but I didn't understand it because I was young. Mm. I just thought, okay, I'll move on. Didn't, over, didn't overthink it too much. You've got that drive. Always. And you've always. got that desire to go and better yourself. Yeah. You know? And I think from, from the days when I've sort of seen you and we, we you know, You've come to coaching with me. I've always known, not cocky element maybe potentially, yeah, you know. Yeah. But that cockiness was always good. It was always well bantered. It was always um, enjoyable. But it was it was a good. Mm. I, want, I want to See, do more. I, you mentioning that now, it actually upsets me if someone says I was quite cocky. Because mm. you know, then that wasn't the intention. Because mm. like I was saying to you, I just thought I was fitting in. Mm. I was being funny. Mm. I was just enjoying the banter side, but if someone says cocky, I actually think it's quite an insult, even though I know you don't mean it like mm. that. 
I'm sat there thinking, have oh, I done something wrong? Because mm. someone thinks of like a doubt in me. Sure. And that was never the intention. I was just trying to fit in, no. have a good laugh and make people laugh. Mm. No, absolutely. It sounds a bit odd. No, 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 um, it's, it's not, it's not. And, and, it's, and like, like I say, because, because I know you and we've, you know, we've sort of progressed through years. Like I say, that cut it... <laughs> When I use the word cocky, mm. that is that is the term that yeah. people sort of see and would, would yeah. always play back and go, yeah, exactly. oh, it's just cocky, oh, yeah. Yeah. He, needs, he needs a little bit of a chip rubbing off him. Yeah. And it, but it is that, and actually that, that, so that's quite interesting to hear that it is a concern. Yeah, um, and that's probably what you touched on earlier that I've not mentioned this yet was, that probably played a big part mm. when someone said, well, you're a bit of a cheeky, a bit of a cocky lad. Yeah. And I sat there and thought, I'll just be funny, I'm sorry if I kind of upset you mm. in any way. But that's what people apply you as, and sometimes they never really forget that. No, but it does was, that make sense? But, but like football, said, it, it was always a, it was like I say, yeah. you were never aggressive or you were never abusive. No. There was always that edge and element that mm. you know. So and, and some people would look at you and go, "I can't be doing with shit. Yeah, yeah. It just does my head yeah. in." Yeah, for me, it was always yeah. he's on top of it, and yeah, you, you are trying to be. Friendly and um, and open to people, and, and I think that exactly. did, that to me always was how I perceived it. So, so that's yeah, well that's interesting, yeah. that, and that's interesting for me to take yeah. away because you know sort of to go wow, yeah. you know. But that's the thing, kind of doing this today was letting it out a bit, mm. which I never thought I'd be very comfortable with because I was obviously a bit nervous. Sure, me. but the best thing I've done for a long time. Yeah. So, what does the future hold for Shane then? better than where I am now if that's honest that's me being completely honest mm. off camera on camera it doesn't matter that's me better, being mm. better than where I am now I want to live a good life I want to be within the local area even a bit further out one day that I am a founded coach mm. I am a coach that people want to invest in mm. I know my career I know my path it's people noticing that I don't want to say change the a personal trainer mm. I want people to say I want to build a portfolio that people will be wow he, he gets results mm. he gets good clients I want to work with that guy mm. he knows what he's on about and hence the reason for the coaching courses hence the reason for the early mornings the late nights that I actually do and no mm. one no one sees that no one sees the 5 o'clock starts no no one sees the 9 10 o'clock starts that I'll finish tonight mm. they just see the oh he looks fantastic on social media because social media is a completely different concept mm. when actually it's the early mornings, it's the late nights, it's the busy classes that I attend. Because for my job, it's not just, I don't just coach, I teach classes, I mm. teach boot camps because I love what I do. And do you, you have know? taken your social media from, I mean, I've noticed in the last sort of six to 12 months probably yeah. that your social media presence was always a good social media presence, but all of a sudden I've there's a lot, lot more education in there. There's yeah. a lot more... This is what I'm doing and showing that yeah. that sort of repertoire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also the work that you are putting in. Yes. Yeah. And and you can see that in your social media. So that is something yeah. that is starting to really no, I, I, I can that. see it. Yeah, okay. it's really good. If there was one thing then that you could change looking back over your twenty four years, I know it's not many in, in some people's eyes, but twenty four years is you know, it's it's yeah. still a good I've actually answered this before you've even said it. That's how much I know already. I changed the perception the way people saw me, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Because from a young age, cocky, cheeky, mm. um, it was never intention. I was just trying to laugh and joke with people. Mm. And that carried on for many, many years. It was mm. probably the last three, four years where I kind of said, I like, don't want to be that guy. That was mm. not the image that I wanted. No. Even when I was the PT first qualified, it was the go out to a weekend, spend all my money, mm. come back, look cool on the gym floor because I'd tell everyone at the weekend what I'd been doing. Mm. wasn't the image I was going for. I'd changed the way that people perceived me. So I want people to remember me for who I am now because mm. this is the real me. This is now. Not what I was then. Not the cheeky chappy that was just trying to fit in and be right with everyone. Mm. This is me now. So the way people perceive me. And what's a good day for Shane? Take me through it. What would be? Good what would be a? Do you know that is a that is a, a Shane day. day. A Shane day. Is this including football as well? 
entirely yours. Oh. You you tell me what would you it. what would you so say was a great day for you? One of the greatest things I do, I teach classes. Mm. I absolutely love the boot camp sessions and classes that I teach. So that would be an early morning starter. Mm. I then I'll take my dad out for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um, worship my dad to birds. Mm. Not many people realise that. I think the close people do, but he knows how much I think about him and his wife. Uh, my mum, even, I'll even talk about her, even though I don't admit it all the time. I'm very proud of who they are, and I'm proud of the way they brought me up. Um, clients, got to train the clients. So for me, it's client transformations. I build on a portfolio, so I'm proud of the portfolio I'm building at the moment, but mm-hmm. I know there's still a long way to go. Um, I'd still see family, friends at yeah. some point because I am quite family driven. Mm. I think one thing that does let me down in the career that I'm at is I don't always get a chance to see them because the days that I'll be working, for example, a Friday evening, mm. that uh, after this, um, I could be going around in the evening having a catch up with all of them. Or when it's a weekend, I've got mm. other things on for client onboarding processes, for example, mm. where I could be seeing them. But any time that I do get the opportunity, I do always fit my friends and family in uh, that and then. To finish off, it would definitely be a Chelsea away day at Liverpool. <laughs> Got to be. Got to be. I would never miss that in the world. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Favourite food? Sushi. Sushi? I love sushi. Yeah? Yeah. To ah. this day. To this day. Something Other brands are available, but I always thought you were a bit of a wagamama's oh. fan. I don't, I don't mind it. I don't <laughs> mind it, but give me... Good old fashioned sushi, fresh as raw. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so, favourite colour? Colour? Lime green. Lime green? Mm, from a young age. Wow. Yeah, to this day, a lot of people question that. Um, it was a colour that I seen when I was younger, and to this day, it's just reminded me of childhood and growing up. Yeah. Um, anytime I have a highlighter, it's got to be a lime green one. All oh, right. Yeah, so the simplest things like that reminds me of who I am. I'll be looking out for that on yeah, the, yeah. Uh, some of your social media yeah, to definitely. see highlighted like green. Yeah, we see, I think I've put one on recently, actually. You'll notice highlight colour is a lime green yeah. to this day. Favourite thing of fitness? Could be, either in, it could be either in the gym or it could be, yeah, what's, what's the favourite thing? Okay, let's go, let's go with the gym one. What's your favourite piece of kit in the gym? Piece of kit in the gym? I've got to go with a hack squat. Okay. Hike squat, and that is. I've got to travel a little bit further for a hike squat. Yeah. But every time I train a hike squat, I never get a feeling or a sensation like it. Yeah. For saying I'm a, a short guy, I can pack some power in when I need to. Cool. Favorite thing to give to a client to do. To do. Yeah. So, so I know when we. You you know what my favorite yes. my favorite thing in the gym Definitely. is. Definitely. But what, you know, when you give a client something and go, I want you to do this, what's the one thing that, that you go, this is really tough, and, and it gives them sort of markers to, yeah, that's... It's got to either be a skill mill, mm-hmm. which is a fast embroidered treadmill, so it's self-automated, you don't stop start it, it stops... Oh, is that, that that rolling track one? Yeah, the rolling yeah, track one's got yeah. one of the favourite ones. Or a very, very simple one, a plank, military plank. Right. So starting from your elbow straight arms and back down yeah it really gets everything working from push pushing element to yeah. then pulling your body weight up yeah. to engaging your core to then working your lower body because you've got to hold your positioning yeah so it's one of the best ones to do cool and so last question go for it if you were interviewing you mm-hmm. what would be the question you'd want to ask yourself that's a good one and then answer it <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> Probably one that I would say to myself is how committed and determined am I to bettering myself? Right. And I'd say right here, right now in front of cameras, I am going to be 100% better in five years' time. Right. Without a doubt. Okay. So in five years, mm. we need to do a, a revisit. Need to do a revisit. <laughs> Find out where or this podcast goes. when you've got your podcast, I need to exactly. be coming on and going, so you doubt. said to me. <laughs> there's, there's things in the pipeline, like the YouTube channel of the podcast, but I've got to remind myself, and again, touching on just the last part of this is, I am still young. I want to be 10 years, five years ahead. But I've got to remind myself I'm still young and not everything comes to you straight away. Mm. You've got to go out there, educate, learn, apply it. 
build better foundations as you move along, but I'm still at the very beginning. Mm. I've got to keep reminding myself that because sometimes I want to go further straight away, but I should be taking it step by step. Yeah, really, yeah, not running exactly. too fast. and Walk before you can run. Yeah, yeah, and, and enjoy the journey. Exactly, and I certainly am at the moment. Brilliant. Shane, thanks for joining Absolutely. me today. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you. And, and good luck with uh, everything you do. Thank you very much.